Public school students better think twice before picking up the pipe if they want to stay in school. How much bigger of a meteor are we talking if somebody were to come up to a big rock and say, is this it? A messy accident backed up the Blue Bridge earlier tonight, and cops say a drunk driver is to blame. Too late for a man about to celebrate his retirement with a big bash. Well, plenty of sunshine over the weekend, and we're just hoping it continues for the rest of the week. Mike, how's it looking? Forget the treadmill. How about dancing your way to fitness? Just what are we going to do? And don't go away. We'll be right back. KIMA Keeper Action News starts now. A close call for an elderly Kennewick woman. She was found nearly freezing to death in a ditch. The woman had wandered away from her home and ended up off on the side of the road in the dead of night. Luckily for her, a cop just doing his nightly routine saw his headlights shining on something unusual and went to go check it out. Now, 82-year-old Eileen Ertle is back home tonight and is doing okay, but there's no question if an officer did not find her when he did, the outcome could have been much different. Kenwick police say it was 32 degrees outside when they found Eileen and she wasn't much warmer. Officers say they reached her before hypothermia set in. Action News talked to a lot of neighbors in that area. They claim this isn't the first time an elderly person has waltzed out of home when they're supposed to be watched. New information on a woman who attacked a police officer in Milton Freewater. Tonight we have her picture. Now cops hope you can lead them to Marissa Hawk. Police say she was driving a stolen truck and attacked a cop when he tried to stop her. Police say she rammed her car into the officer. The cop shot back and Hawk ran. The officer is okay, but they're still looking for her. There's a ward out for information that lands her in cuffs. A messy accident backed up the Blue Bridge earlier tonight, and cops say a drunk driver is to blame. Pasco officers arrested the driver two blocks away. They say he ran off after causing the crash and ending up in a ditch at 28th and Lewis. The driver now faces hit and run charges and a DUI. A passenger was hurt, but there's no details on their condition. It's been a banner year for Prosser. A half a dozen wineries opened, an old theater brought back to life, and even upgrades to the hospital. But there's still one big to do on their list get visitors downtown, and the changes are finally starting to surface. Old buildings are putting on new paint, fixing up fronts. They're working to fit into the new standards set by the Main Street Committee. It's gonna look a better look for better bottom like lines. Today, Benton County leaders signed off on the next step out at Red Mountain. The idea is to build an inn, trails, an interpretive center, and stores in the wine region. With blueprints in place, the next step is environmental studies and more public hearings. Not all commissioners are 100% on board. Max Bennett says he's worried the strict building codes and zoning will leave some wineries out in the cold. Columbia Winery is moving production from Woodenville to Sunnyside. Wineries in the Lower Valley are pretty pleased with this one. Brian Groth owns Canyon's Edge Winery. He doesn't see it as competition, but more recognition for the area. Well, there's a lot of appeal going on, and Columbia Winery is just confirming the opening of the processing plant in Sunnyside. They're not saying yet where a visitor center might go in. In more local news, a new shopping mall could be in Yakima by the spring. Yakima leaders are moving things right along with plans to put up a new mall. The spots by North 16th and Highway 12. National chain stores are already waiting to come in. The wind's doing a pretty good job of keeping that fire going. A buzz through the town of Pendleton as people could smell and see a whole lot of land ablaze right before their eyes. The winds are not helping at all. It's really not. I've, I've watched the bulldozer put it out and the wind just fans it right back up faster than he can get it out. The case was the same for a helicopter and a plane dropping water and retardant on the fire. It would just put out the flames and in a couple seconds it would flare up again. With the blaze threatening dozens of homes, no evacuation was put into place, but residents were put on alert. It was scary because it was so close and it was so hot. The flames were really, really hot. There, you couldn't see. You couldn't see the flames once the smoke started. Donna Franklin watched as the fire came over the hill, creeping to within feet of her home. I guess you, the smart thing probably would have been to leave, you know, but you couldn't get out because of all the traffic and the 
the people of the commotion. With not many options, she grabbed her kids and stayed inside her home, just praying the fire would stop. Franklin says there have been small fires in the past, but nothing has come this close to her doorstep. To me, it's sad because my dog and I walk the hillside every day, and obviously tomorrow morning we're not going to be doing that. Besides the blackened hillside, Franklin can find something good in all this. No lives or homes were lost. But the reality is the threat of fire still exists. It's not over yet. The fire season's still hot on us. More local news. I put myself in the middle of the madness this Black Friday to see just how people do it. From what I saw, people have a partner in crime when they're doing some damage on the pocketbook. But in most cases, the shopping partners had two different perspectives on shopping. Are we done yet? Are we there yet? Are we done yet? This dad might sound like a broken record to his daughter, but that's not going to stop her from dragging dad around. Pretty fun because I can kind of get some stuff that my mom sometimes wouldn't let me get. Tanner Gilbert is one of many who got up early to shop Black Friday, whether he wanted to or not. She dragged me in there this morning. Can you tell? He's not exactly the shopper in the relationship, but he makes it work. I find the closest sofa and sit down and wait. His wife Aubrey says that's not the case in every store they go into. When we're into champs, he's not dragging, but... It seems there's a tug of war between people who shop together, but there's always some sort of compromise. Yeah, promise some electronics and food. Getting a little grumpy. Karen and Craig are like night and day when it comes to shopping. I am not a Black Friday shopper. I don't belong here. <laughs> but in the end, it works. Yes, yes, I like to spend money. For shopaholics, it's the whole experience that matters. A lot of people and just all the sales. <laughs> it's a girl's dream. <laughs> While shopping partners might not see eye to eye, some see the mad dash of Black Friday as tradition. We do it every year. It's just something that we've done every year for after Thanksgiving. And yesterday, retailers were worried about sales, but after today, some are saying so far so good. Consumers have kept coming and kept spending. If I was slightly hungry, maybe I'd want to take a bite out of this, but after seeing it so many times, I'm kind of just sick of it. You know, when you have some uh, too much of one thing, you're just like, I'm over it. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm at. All 134 pounds of the so-called absolutely ridiculous burger can be yours for a mere $350 with a 24-hour notice. Because you know why? It takes 12 hours to prepare and requires uh, three men to flip the burger and put it between the 50-pound buns. Yeah, and how many people does it take to eat it? Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. even want to know. Uh, Thanks for staying up, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.